Welcome, sixth grade world history students. This is going to be the opening video for chapter three, Early Humans. I will be uh, opening up lesson one for you, which is focusing on hunter gatherers. So why is this important? Why are we talking about this? Well, because this technology led to the expansion and survival of early civilization. The first uh, period of time we're going to be talking about is the Paleolithic Age. Think of this as the Old Stone Age, paleo meaning old, lithic meaning stone. The Paleolithic Age, the Old Stone Age. This ended about 4,500 years before recorded time. When I say recorded time, I'm really referring to when people started writing. Okay? It began about 2.5 million years ago and lasted until 8,000 BC, so a very long period of time. Very, very long period of time. During this time, the Paleolithic age, people used stone to make weapons and tools. And these weapons and tools were obviously uh, used to help them survive in their environment. You can see here in this picture, we have lots of examples of different types. You see lots of arrowheads, which have been sharpened um, to a point so that they could be used to hunt. We also see some larger tools here that maybe look more like hammers or axes and those tools obviously would be used maybe to build things, to build, um, to build temporary shelters or be able to chop something down. So whatever maybe they needed to do with those tools at the time, but we can see stuff that maybe looks more modern, looks like more modern tools, hammers, axes, things of that nature. And you can see here is that there's also some stones that have holes in them. And maybe they put those holes through and they threaded some type of, of yarn, some type of material through there that they could then you know, put on a string and use for some other purpose as well. So a lot of interesting pictures there. All right, surviving the Paleolithic age. Paleolithic people lived before roads, farms, or villages. So I know this is hard for us to imagine, but there wasn't easy ways to travel back and forth. There were no roads. They were not living in one place farming and growing food. They were not all set up in one nice cozy village with lots of peoples. Um, they were constantly on the move. They were called nomads. This is the term we use to describe people who regularly move from place to place to hunt. They're going to be following the food sources. Uh, as the food moves throughout the year, obviously through the seasons, they're going to move to follow those food sources. They're also going to have to move sometimes depending on other resources. If they run out of water where they are at the moment, they may have to move to find a better source of fresh water. They survive by hunting and gathering. Depending where they live could really depend on what they're hunting and what they're gathering. If you lived near the ocean, you would be gathering lots of things like clams, oysters, uh, fish. You'd be catching fish. Uh, you could be obviously gathering materials very different than someone than the nomads that lived in a forest environment. They would be hunting things more like rabbits and deer and gathering seeds, nuts and berries. So this is how they're surviving. As they move from place to place, they are hunting and gathering. Usually they would live in small bands of around 20 to 30 members. They had to be careful not to let these bands get too large. It would be difficult to feed everyone if you had hundreds of people in your nomadic band. So usually they were on the smaller end, 20 to 30 members. And as I, I was stating earlier, the animals they hunted or the food they gathered really depended on where they lived. It would also depend on the time of the year, depending on summer, um, Winter, obviously in winter, it's going to be harder to find certain food sources, harder to hunt certain animals, really depending on where you live. Also, if you're living in the mountains, a very cold environment compared to a very maybe hot environment. So the constant movement to find uh, resources to eat and obviously water to drink. The nomads are always on the move. And you can see in the picture down there, we have an example of some Paleolithic age people trying to stalk and hunt a woolly mammoth. The Neolithic nomadic tribes spent a majority of their time in a constant pursuit of food, whether it was hunting animals, gathering fruits and nuts that grew on trees and vines where they lived. Men and women took different roles in this food gathering. Men were typically tasked with hunting the large animals. They became experts on the animals that lived in their area. They learned how they behaved. They learned where they, what time of day they would go to the watering hole and they would be waiting for them. Um, they learned what baits they could use and they became very, 
very good at tracking tracking these animals. Now, they're hunting large animals with handmade tools or handmade weapons, uh, stone tip spears, um, sometimes just a large rock to club the animal over the head with. Um, so this was not an easy task these guys were taking on. Now, the benefit of hunting these large animals is that they could feed a nomadic tribe for many, many days because of how much meat they could, they could source from a large animal. They could also use the furs and many of the other parts of the animal for tools and, and weapons and things like that. Now, the women had a role, too. Typically, we're not involved in the hunt, but that doesn't mean they weren't sitting around waiting for the men to get back. They were doing their part near camp, looking for nuts and berries and anything they could add to the tribe's diet. Um, if they were near water, they may spend some time fishing or looking for oysters or clams or things that are readily available near the water. Um, the men and women of the tribe worked together to ensure that, to ensure their survival. Um, nobody had it easy. They all worked hard. They all made decisions together. Um, and it was a truly a very equal society in, in that sense of the decision making. So what kind of inventions were developed during the Neolithic period? Well, you can see a few pictures there. Um, those are tools and weapons made primarily from stone. You see the stone tip spears in the bottom picture there. And you see um, a hand axe that in the top left picture where it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a sharpened piece of stone that is used to chop wood, or chop anything really. Um, but you would have to hammer it repeatedly over and over and over and over against what you were chopping. It's not like a, an axe that we think of today with a very sharp metal blade. Um, they needed tools to scrape um, hides. So when they would kill a large animal, they would use the fur for warmth. You have to scrape, you know, this is kind of gross, but you got to scrape all the meat from the inside um, before you can dry it out and use it for, for clothing. Um, they would fashion fish hooks, obviously to fish. Um, and then they had also had developed means of creating bow and arrows using stone-tipped um, arrows. And then you can see an example of bow and arrow there. And then also, the people, the Neolithic nomadic tribes, had to adapt to the area they lived in. Their shelter, their food. Um, the way they acted and behaved was dictated by the area they lived in. Um, if you're living in a colder area or a rainy area, it's extremely important that you have some kind of shelter to keep the cold out, to keep the rain off you constantly. Living in hot climates don't require as much shelter, but you do need something to protect you from wild animals or other nomadic tribes. Um, as Mr. Miller mentioned earlier, food was dictated by what's around. And um, if you were near the ocean, seafood became part of your life. You know, there was no, I don't like seafood. That's what you ate because it was there. And um, if the animals moved, the people moved, which is really important to remember about the nomadic people. They're constantly on the move, always looking for fresh food and fresh water. Okay, we are going to talk about the types of inventions during the Paleolithic age. So, fire, it provided warmth, light, and scared away the wild animals. Early humans produced fire by rubbing two pieces of wood together and eventually developed drill-like tools and used stones to create sparks. Um, this was called a flint that they used. I got that right, right? Yes, see? See, even I had to double check. Okay, so it's providing warmth, light, scaring away uh, wild animals. What else could they start using fire for now? 
Mm, let's think. Cooking their food. Wow, we're not eating raw meat anymore. Now we have a way to cook it and start eating some like regular meat, right? Okay. So here we can see the cavemen working with the, the flint and striking them together to try to create the fire. Here's another one where he's just, you know, rubbing that stick in there so he can try to get that fire going. Okay. Now, language and art. Language makes it easier to work together and pass on knowledge, as well as express our thoughts and feelings. Some Paleolithic art is still visible, especially in dry, well-protected caves. Those are some really cool drawings. Think about this. This is Paleolithic time. They didn't go to art class. They just figured this out and drew it themselves. The Ice Ages. I think Miss Hodges is going to come in now and talk to you. Bye-bye. So throughout the Ice Ages, um, people had to follow their food wherever they went. And the Ice Ages provided a land bridge that could be passed over from one continent to another when it was really cold and there was ice everywhere. So um, the extreme cold, long periods of extreme cold, affected all of the Earth. The most recent Ice Age was over um, about 100,000 years ago. The glaciers grew larger and larger, larger and the water levels began to drop off. So the animals and the people would go to where they could find water. And so that led to migration patterns. The dry land was connected. It connected the ice made dry land that connected the continents to where they could go walk across them easily and migrate from one continent to another. The cold climate lowered the food supply, made survival harder. So they kept following the herds and the herds would go to where it was warmer and they could get to an area that might have better living conditions. And so they would keep following those herds and keep following the warmer climate. And that allowed people to migrate to different regions to find resources that they needed to survive. So the ice ages were, led to a time of great migration where people could spread all around. And that migration allowed people to be on different parts of the continent, uh, of different, par different continents in different parts of the world, um, all at the same time. So they just began migrating around to the warmer spots. And that allowed for pockets of development to happen. So wherever people would settle where it was warm enough, where farming conditions could take root, that's where they would settle. So they would leave the nor northern areas coming further south. So here's a map we can look at for a global journey in terms of migration. So we can see the blue areas is kind of where it started 200,000 years ago. And these are just guesstimates on these um, time frames and the years. So the scientists do the best, that, uh, best they can to figure out these dates. So they would leave from Africa. It's kind of where it first started. Then they landed.